My blessed friends, let us come together to hear the word of the Lord that comes to us from the 23rd Psalm. I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version, so please open your ears instead of going through the machinations of what is the King James Version, and listen anew to God's holy word. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. My brothers and sisters in Christ, it is uh, still a little awkward to be preaching by myself, so I hope that you will extend a little bit of grace as I'm looking upon an empty church as I say these holy words. But my friends, that's sort of what this psalm is about, isn't it? As we're dealing with social distancing, is what it's called, as this pandemic of COVID-19 continues to go through our country, we feel lost. We feel saddened. We watch stores begin to close or have reduced hours. We watch as people are unable to work or begin to work remotely. We watch as the sickness case numbers rise. But what can we do as disciples? Where can we find our hope? Where can we find our love? Where can we find the courage to continue going forth on this blessed time, my friends? Because this is a very strange Lent, isn't it? During a time of voluntary self-denial, we have found ourselves in forced self-denial. As we may have given up one or two things, or maybe we've taken on one or two things, we find ourselves amidst a new time of forced staying indoors, of forced hand sanitizer every two seconds, of forced trying to pick whatever we can from the grocery store as somebody goes and buys all of the toilet paper. Now, fortunately for us, we put limits on what people can buy at our grocery stores. So this week, in our second week of social distancing, we've become much more comfortable with one another, recognizing the value of the community rather than the value of self. But let's talk about the psalm as we get into it, because sometimes we can feel lost, can't we? We can feel like we're not where we want to be. The very first psalm, very first verse reminds me of this. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. We want a lot of things right now. We want the sunshine to stay out and stay warm so we can at least be outside as we're not able to meet with one another. We want our fears to go away with a 14-day incubation period of maybe we may be sick already, but we don't know quite yet. Maybe we want our store to open back up. Maybe we want to go back to work. Maybe we want to help our kids enjoy the day. but. Here's the truth. God is in control. God is our mighty shepherd who is here with us and for us. And he reminds us in this very first verse, I shall not want. Because when we want in the world, we forget where our true love is. And our Savior, Jesus the Christ, and our God Almighty, my friends, we forget that if we want what God wants, we're happy. We're content. We are able to go forth and share the message of love. We're able to look persecution, these enemies around us. We'll get to that later. But the enemies around us, we are able to share in the good news that God is our shepherd. Let's talk about that for a second, because shepherds don't exactly have the biggest rep if you look at them in our biblical text. For example, King David was a shepherd. He was completely ignored when Samuel came forth to look for the future king of Israel because he was a shepherd. They deemed him not worthy. Or think about who shared the message of the birth of our Lord Jesus. It was the shepherds who ran out and went into the nations, into the countryside, and told people of the miracles that they had seen. Shepherds, the lowest of the low, those people who smell like sheep and just stay outside all of the time who take care of the animals instead of doing something better or something grander. 
But my friends, we forget about what David knows as he goes through this. The Lord being his shepherd, we as the sheep are guided and loved by the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And using shepherd in the sense of a leader is a mighty warrior king because a shepherd just doesn't lead his sheep around. He keeps them safe. He has a rod, a staff, a sling, whatever he needs to keep his flock safe. And some of you look to me as a pastor and say, well, Sam, you're our shepherd. Not exactly. I might be the shepherd sheep of a group of sheep, but I too look to the Lord of Lords and the God above all for my own hope and my own wants. And it tells us that when we want what God wants, we don't need anything more. We find that what we have is just enough. We find that when we look to our communities, we can share that love and remind them. It's not about more and more and more. It's about doing what God wants, which is simple, to love your God and love your neighbor. Let's continue on. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Many of us are going through a season of loneliness that we may have not known before. But this is a reminder for us on this incredible day that God is with us. That's why I wanted you to listen to the New Revised instead of saying, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. When I walk through the darkest valleys, I fear no evil. As I go through these trials, through these struggles, I fear nothing. Because my hope is in the Lord. Thy rod and thy staff comfort me. Let me give you a quick example of what the rod and staff are used for. Typically, when we say the rod, we're thinking of a shepherd's staff, right? It looks like a candy cane, like a J-shaped kind of thing. And it's used when sheep get stuck, right? When they get stuck in a bush or they get stuck in a pit and the shepherd just can't pick them up. So he goes and takes his hook and he grabs them under his belly and he pulls them back to be part of the flock or the raw or the staff for example when sheep are walking in a line and maybe one of them wants to go this way the rod can easily or the staff whichever tool you like can easily pull them back gently lead them back into line back into following as all of the sheep are following because here's here's the thing we are sheep not in the way that society says that being part of religion makes us a sheeple, that we're following something that's false or fake, but the fact that you ever watched a sheep? We don't understand what they're doing. They walk around, they do their own thing, they fall in pits, they get stuck, they get lost, they get worried, they get sad, just like we do. But they know that there is strength in numbers. They know that when they are together, there is wholeness and love, and they recognize that with the shepherd, there is peace. And there is hope for them continuing on. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Might you anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. I want to talk about that right now. That table that we are promised by God. You set a table before me and my cup overflows. That overflowing makes us think of a banquet, doesn't it? This grand feast that God has promised to all of us. But here it comes, my friends. In the presence of our enemies, sometimes we don't get that luxury. Sometimes when we go out into the world, that table we want, that grand feast, is just a TV tray. It's just a hospital table as we sit in a hospital bed wondering what's gonna happen the next day. Sometimes it's just a small, simple microwaved meal to remind us that God's gonna give us strength. Now this meal we have might not get us through to next month or next year, but sometimes that meal is just a simple gesture, a simple reminder and promise of what God has done for us. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. My brothers and sisters in Christ, we are being asked to follow the shepherd during this time. We are being asked to share in the face of what God has shown us, 
We are looking at, for example, the pandemic around us, at social isolation, at wants versus needs, as national disasters go around us. We are shown time and time again of what God can do with his people. Now, I don't want you to think that COVID-19 or the earthquakes or anything happening around us is because God is judging us or showing wrath or something along those lines. I mean, possibly, but I don't want to get down that rabbit hole. But what I want to remind you is that we can do incredible things as a community. We can do incredible things as the body of Jesus Christ to show love to the lost, to show healing to the sick, to show an unburdening to the burdens, burdened, I should say. My friends, we have a lot to work with and we're very uncertain, but what I know is that as a sheep, I know that the shepherd is with us. As a shepherd, I know that the Lord is here. I know that the King of glory is with us during this time. And I ask you to remember that when we follow Jesus, when we follow the Christ, we shall not want. We shall not want what this world thinks that we want, but we shall want the way that God wants us to, to want, which is to share his love with the community and the world abounding around us. World without end. In his heavenly precious name. Amen.